your no. stuff out there. Yeah. There's an enormous focus on, on religious satire at the moment and comedy. What, what do you think what do you think they'll do to 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 the to the satire and comedy? Um, I think the great problem is that most organized religion is intellectually unjustifiable. You know, people come in with a set of ideas that are completely in contrast to your own and then require kind of exclusive respect for those views, despite the fact that they are completely out of tune and unharmonious with the culture to which they've come. I don't think that's a reasonable request to make. If I was in Saudi Arabia, I would not encourage my wife to walk down the street in a bikini. I would say respect the local mm. tr tradition mm. and cultures. And I think that if people come to a country where there is a thing called freedom of speech, then I think that they should accept that mm. that is a principle. And if not, I don't see why they shouldn't be asked to live in a country that is in accordance with their views. But because th there's a certain amount of compromise that is possible, oh, and yeah. that's marvellous. But when, when compromise is impossible, as it is with not, not, not all of the Islamic faith, but with certain groups yeah, in the middle, yeah. when, when compromise is impossible, then compromise is impossible. But have you thought about, you know, you could, as a, as a Python group, have made a sketch about uh, God, Jesus, Muhammad, and and uh, Allah doing all England badminton or mm. a hundred yard race or whatever. Could you have performed, or let me rephrase that question: How do you think you would have performed in that sort of more hostile religious environment? Yeah, I think. Do you know what? Uh, well, yes, do I, I mean don't know. It would have changed everything because we could probably have done a silly, a, son, a silly skit, skit like that in '69, because I don't think any of us knew anything about Islam then. You know, and uh, you have to be vaguely aware of a, of a, a religion before you can uh, be aware that you could offend it. Do you see? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. If you, if you uh, were writing a sketch and someone said, you better be careful about that because the Neoplatonists are not going to like it, <laughs> you see, you'd be sort of, oh, <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do next. You know, it comes into mind. I don't know if, you, if it ever came into your mind that you were offending the Catholic Church when you started yes, doing your sketches. Yes, but we didn't think they were going to kill us. No. No, that's a major difference. And that is a major difference. Yeah. It's a major, I'm not being funny. That's a major difference. Yeah. And actually... You thought about being sued? Like, hmm? Yeah, you thought about being sued, maybe? We thought it might ca cause a bit of trouble. Um, when it did cause trouble, we were not completely surprised, but what we were surprised by was really how unconvincing the arguments were mm. for those relatively small number of Christians who didn't like the film, because an enormous like, number of Christians got the film, because mm. the film was not an attack on religion, the film was, an, the film was an attack on the way some people practice religion. You know, if you're a member of the Spanish Inquisition and you're uh, <laughs> burning a heretic and Jesus Christ came uh, wandering by and say, can I ask why you're burning that poor man because he seems in great pain and they said yes Well, he disagrees with us on our um, Interpretation of your gospel of love. I think Christ would go <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so that's one way of following a religion is to do exactly the opposite of what the founder of the religion said and there are many Christians in the United States who seem to think that capitalism and Protestantism are almost interchangeable. And Christ did not say, blessed are the rich. No. But do you think that satire and comedy around the, the Muslim issues or Islamic issue would be more subtle? Like during the, I'm just thinking, you know, during the censorship in, in Second World War, you know, yeah. the satire came in more subtle to go under the radar? Yes, sort of thing? You, you, that's right. And in communist Russia, there were always uh, jokes going along. Uh, I don't think you can ever stamp it out, thank God. But I think the most important thing is to realize that this is a hugely, hugely complicated issue mm. to do with to what right have people, have, to, to what extent do people have a right not to be offended? Well, I'm not so sure people do have that right. I've certainly never 
said you should not have made that program or made that film because it offended me. I've never ever thought like that. And it's when people want to do that, uh, it reminds me of the sort of maiden aunt who comes mm. into a Christmas party and everyone stops fooling and asking around and telling naughty jokes, you know, and sort of behaves demurely until she goes out again. Why should that one person be mm. entitled to limit everyone else's fun? But that's what basically happened, hasn't it, after the yes, death that's, that's threats? What I mean, that's what yeah. happens. That's what happens. And sometimes I think... <laughs> Well, what should we just sit back and wait for the Muslim comedians to, to sort of, you know, break the ground? Maybe that's a very good. Maybe that's a very good idea. Let them go out there and sort of we can start to find out what we can do. I'm, I'm very unhappy with the idea that they can negate mm, mm. a totally central Western liberal mm. idea. It is very hard to write comedy at this time because I don't think anymore that we really know what the rules are. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, but you said something very, very funny about that you sh maybe we should let UN decide which country uh, uh, that should be offended. Take uh, take the jokes for 12 months and then <laughs> then another another country. Now it's Ethiopia's time and then People, it's uh, that's right. Croatia. People, exactly. People like to laugh. And yeah. when I do what I call nationalistic jokes, When I say about the French, you know, um, why do the French have so many civil wars? And the answer is because they like to win one now mm. and again. You see. Now, people think that's a funny joke. But isn't that... But it's not because they hate the French. No, 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 no. And that's... It, to me, it's... I think that was pretty... You know, could have been nationalistic maybe like 30, 40 years ago. Don't you yeah. think that's that's just being part of our everyday life? That it's okay. We can teach us, We can say pretty obnoxious things about the Swedes, yeah. and I guess the Vietnamese can say things about the Koreans. Yes. And you know, it's just a neighbor thing. That's right. And most my experience traveling around the world is that almost everybody insults the people next door. Yeah. The Spanish insult the uh, Portuguese and, and the French insult the Belgians and vice versa and that seems to be absolutely harmless yeah, but yeah. you'll always have some people coming along and say no no you mustn't make jokes like that you know there are... and the answer is that all humor is critical if you had a, a perfect human being out there someone who was entirely reasonable and kind and flexible it wouldn't be funny or if you had a, a story in which everything went right it wouldn't be funny It's all about things not being right and things mm. going wrong. So all humor is to some extent critical. But if you go on and say, well, oh, you mustn't hurt their feelings, but so you finish up not having any jokes, not being allowed to have any jokes. And again, you know, if you take a, 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 a rather unpleasant joke that was told in America um, and it, it involved a particular immigrant culture. And the joke was, how many, how do you get this number of, um, how do you get the maximum number of people of this immigrant culture into the back of a Volkswagen? And the answer was... Throw a coin. Throwing a coin in the back. Yeah. Of it. Now, if you try to tell that about Swedes, it's going to be... It won't make, make anyone laugh because it's dependent on a certain yeah. uh, attitude towards that culture. Do you, do, do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I find right now I don't know what the rules are. And if I was going to write a play, I would almost set it, almost certainly set it earlier in history, whether it was 10 years earlier or 200 years earlier. Yeah, yeah. Because you knew what the rules were then. And we don't now, because we're very much an immigration culture everywhere. The rules are in a pr process of transition. And if you don't know what, what, what the rules are, it's hard to know how you can make fun by breaking them. I once did the dead parrot sketch, you know that? And an earnest young man came up to me afterwards and said, Mr. Cleese, may I ask you a question about the parrot sketch? <laughs> He said, it is about the Vietnam War. <laughs> A ray for analyzing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, John Glees. It's pleasure. Been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. So, do you still run a farm? <laughs> you still run? No, no I don't. I don't. Oh, yeah. I, I, I should have taken over the farm. All right. But uh, no, I came out of it and came How into comedy. How long ago? Uh, about 25 years ago. Oh. Yeah. 
I've learned from farming, you know, that you just have to be hands-on and, and work with it a lot. And Did work you know with the funny audience. thing is there's so many young comedians who don't know that? No. No, of course. And, and because there's so many more comedians that, you know, the level of mm. greatness and, and poorness is, you know, there's, there's so many more poor comedians. Yeah. Yeah. Do bad comedians, sorry. Yeah. But who should pick that? If they get an audience, as I always say, you know, who could claim that they're not comedians? Mm. If their audience like them, love them, you know, That's go right. ahead. Yeah. That's right. You have to go out there and convince your own, your own audience. And I guess you had that as well when oh, you yeah. started up. Oh, yeah. It just got easier as I got older because people only came to see me if I, they knew that they liked me. <laughs> You see, made a big difference to have an audience that's pre-selected. Yeah, yeah, you. yeah. You are hovering, sir. Yeah, it's because uh, the next one is coming up, I guess. Yes, exactly. I could see that uh, Sean was like okay. in the steps. Excellent. Okay. Interesting. They, that was very I'm, interesting. I mean, Thank uh, you. I'm sorry You've for You've got wonderful big heart farmer's hands. Yes, you see, my father those. taught me that. Look, I teach it to my son now. Yes. You have to press hard. Into no, but it's the hand itself, you see. Look at that, my tiny little hand. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean?